This excerpt from the public television program, The Piano Guy, is brought to you by the National Piano Foundation. Well, I'm really excited to introduce you to one of my good friends and a great piano player, Bradley Sowash. Hi, Bradley. Hey, Scott. How are you? I'm great today. Well, I am uh, hoping you are going to be willing to be unselfish enough to, to throw out some of your uh, good ideas, as always. You're such a good jazz educator and a good piano player. It's, it's very helpful, I think, for our viewers to, to see what you do. And what we want to talk about is the tune Autumn Leaves. You know, it's, a, it's really a, a standard. It's, it's kind of a jazz standard, although I guess it got really popular originally when Roger Williams recorded it. Uh, we were doing some research in mid '50s, I think, at some point, and it has the distinction of being the the longest running number one hit that was an instrumental ever. So uh, I think it might have some French roots too. I saw in a lead sheet book, a uh, uh, fake book, it said "Les Feuilles Mortes," the yeah. dead leaves. So yeah, I don't yeah, know if that good. was the lyrics. Or? Maybe, yeah, and I guess Johnny Mercer did the the lyrics of the tune. I, okay. Yeah, but anyway, the uh, this tune is kind of fun because number one, there's some very identifiable chord changes. It, it follows, you know, going to two fives all the time or a circle of fifths. We talk about. And it also, you can really do it in a couple different versions. You can do it more up like a jazz tune or more slow like a ballad. So let's hear a couple measures of it so we can all, you know, kind of get it in our, in our head and then we'll start working through it. Yeah. Like that. Very identifiable. Yeah, we hear that in cocktail clubs and you hear it in hot jazz settings and sometimes well, you hear it in grocery stores. Maybe that's the best way to approach this is to kind of split it into two pieces and say let's try it first as like the slow ballad sound that kind of soft you know or not soft but maybe more emotional you know thing right. and then we'll also try to give us give away some tips that we can do to make it sound a little bit more swinging. Right and maybe so. I can see that those might even actually come together. It'd be okay. neat to, uh, uh, to perform this in a way that was a ballad first and then started swinging in the end. It's a well, nice way to set up a tune. Maybe we'll do it that way. Okay, sounds great. Now, if you're going to do it slow, let's talk about that one first. You're pretty, you're, at that point, you're kind of sticking to, you know, chords in the left hand, more noodling in the right hand. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, this, this song has those big holes in it. If you check it out, nothing. Space, 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 space. space. So yeah. what do we do with space? Well, we tastefully fill it. Yeah. Or maybe not so tasteful. Yeah. In some <laughs> case, fill more. That's right. Now, I know Roger Williams' huge hit. He had, the, you know, that was kind of the, the, the signature hook of that tune. You go, da, 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 da. You know, it was this huge run that would come down. See, and, and so, I figured that was sort of a musical leaves falling off the trees. Oh, clearly, uh, clearly, clearly. I think that was the, yeah, the allegory there was that the, you're, you know, hearing the leaves coming down. But let's give away just one, one trick to do I that. I think like what he was doing, let's get our, our key together first. Okay. We could uh, think of this as a G minor, which is the same um, black keys as in B flat. Uh, let's just play a G minor scale. <laughs> So you have the white keys except for B flat and E okay. flat. It's important to know that scale if you're going to do these runs because uh, they all are solidly within those seven notes. You need notes. to stick to those notes. Okay. So you, you can noodle your way down. The, um, uh, let's do the tune. And then we can do some kind of noodle down. I think he did um, some thirds. Okay. Let's give that away real slowly right in the middle so we make sure we get it on the camera there. You, you said minor thirds. So just do the. So we do the tune, and yeah. I'll, we'll play it down low here. Great. So I'm going to stay in those seven notes. We just start on the E flat. Okay. I'll skip the next note, and then and then come down and do it again. So some of them are minor thirds, some of them are major thirds. You're just sticking to thirds. I on just the, think of the key. Let's say we were in okay. C major. Okay. That'd be easier to understand. Okay, I see what C. you mean. It's all the white keys. So you're just following those notes that you gave away, the, the G minor scale, and you're just playing it in thirds going all the way down. Exactly. Just sticking to, okay. to those so seven notes. Do kind of slowly one octave like that. Okay. So really, it's just a function of, because that's something I don't do well just for not having good enough chops to do it, but you just need to sit there and hammer and, and get good at... Yeah, and but you know, it doesn't have to be that complicated. No. Any kind of little scale passage, if you, if you can play this scale, which isn't hard to finger, one, sure. two, three, one, two, three, four, you can just noodle around. Yeah, that's nice. That works nicely. Leaves falling, or you can wiggle on your way down, whatever. Just okay. adjust those notes. Well, that sounds nice. So it happens during the break of the melody. You know, falling leaves. That's a nice run. Ba da 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 da. Ba da 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 da. Da 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 da. Which just... means you do have to wear multiple personalities. That's sure. tricky. You know, you have to be the chord guy, the melody guy, and the fill guy. You're sort sure. of like the bass player, you know, the guitar player, and the 
and the, the singer singing, and now you're the trumpet in between or something. You yeah. can kind of think in segments like that. Okay. That brings up a point. You know, people sometimes say, oh, I want to play all really complicated and, and big and sound full. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is just play too many notes or try to do too much. And it's true that a really full performance has a lot going on, but it's in different roles. Sure. Here's the bass, here's the harmony, here's the melody, so here's the fills. Taking advantage of the, the fact that piano is one of the only instruments that we really have, we have access to the, to the full orchestra. Right. I think in, that the whole, the whole popular piano style is essentially imitating a band. Interesting. That's the sound we're after. Well, that's, a, that's a good way to think about that mentally. You, you've got to, yeah, you've got to get a bass player in there. You've got to get the stuff in the middle, the harmonic area, and then you've got to get the melodic line up on top. Right, and maybe things in between the melody like this, like sure. Phil. So there's four different instruments being imitated. You have to kind good, of think that way. That's a good mental approach to take on that. Now, if we were in, actually play just a couple measures, if you would, kind of in tempo with that with feel? that slow, yeah, that slower feel. taking advantage of those spaces to noodle a little bit and get in there. It's all, all right. right in the scale. Those, okay. No, those seven notes. Now, the counterpoint to that would be, all right, now if we were doing this in a jazz trio or you're doing it by yourself and, and kind of making it swing, which just does very well, what do you do differently other than just do it a little bit faster? There's well, some stylistic things that you need to tell us about. Sometimes jazz tunes pick up uh, a bit of vocabulary or tradition just by being passed around and played by different guys and there starts to be uh, sort of a rendition that is the definitive way to play it, even okay. though that's not the way the original went. Okay. This is an example of that. There are what we call kicks on this song, where the, the chords, instead of being in the normal position, which is the beginning of the measure, chord, right. chord, 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 you hold back a little bit and play this little rhythm. One, two, three, four, and. You know. Yeah, that's so, in, I've heard that a million times. Actually, that's a fun way to do it. And you hear all the yeah all the the jazz recordings do that. Right, they get that little kick in there, and, you, and it is not always exactly the same rhythm, but you can just hold back on that chord so we got a little ba -da, bit. Ba -do -do -do. Also, uh, notice that we changed uh. the melody originally. Is well, we started out swinging one two five. Uh, uh. <laughs> It's the fourth kick. It tends to be open, like just you fill it, it any way you want. Yeah, and I'm, uh, my, my version of that or thinking through it is where I always then hear a bass player walk one measure, ba do 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. do do Yeah. And then it goes back to the head, da do 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 And so who knows who first did it that way, but it seems like if you call that on a gig, everybody knows they're how to do that. They're going to play it that way. <laughs> yeah, they're going to play it that way. But that's just for the A section. The second section then typically goes into a hard swing with like a walk and, um, you know, something. <laughs> So there aren't kicks on the second half, traditionally. Okay. Let's briefly, and boy, we could talk ourselves into a huge black hole here, so we'll try to, to keep it as, as on top of the water as possible, about the chord changes, the fact that this goes, it does what's called two fives or a circle of fifths all the time. Right. But it, it, your ear really follows the chord changes in this tune well. They right. Boom, ba, do, da, do, It's da, very logical. Do, in fact, um, that logic can inform the way you improvise um, if you play little patterns that, well, let's look at the chords first. Okay. Um, so here's the roots of the chords. Starts on a C. Mm -hmm. The second chord is an F. That's four notes up. Okay. One, two, three, four. And the next chord is a B flat. Four notes up. One, two, three, four. Okay. Next chord's four notes up. So these are all the roots I'm playing. Okay. This next one. And again, you're talking about the roots of the first four chords. So it starts on a C. Starts on yeah. a C minor. C seven. minor. Again, all these F, chords yeah. stick to the key. So there's nothing surprising about this chord. So the, you know flavor, the, seven the flavor of the chords may be different. It could be minors or majors or sevenths. But the roots are all going from C to F to B flat to E flat. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. it's moving around the, the circle here. The next logical one would be A flat. Sure. But they cheat a little bit and play natural to okay. keep us from getting off into outer space here. And then another fourth, and then another fourth, and we're back home. So it moves right around okay. um, the circle of fifths. Okay, and that's what they, sometimes people have heard about that. I don't know what the circle of fifths or circle of fourths is, and you can spend a lot of time worrying about some other things, but in essence, it's a, it's a road map in, in a case of a lot of chord changes, that, that chords have this tendency to move in those in those intervals. They tend to, and it makes it easier to memorize tunes when you realize right. that. Right, because it's just, it's just it. a pattern. Okay, so now putting that into practice with this, and you were... Well, I was going to say that because that's so patternistic, you can play patterns with your solo. I'll just take a C minor 7. 
And I'll play it right here. You know here. what, Bradley, can we take one step backward or just hit me? Let's do this, so I think it'll make it clearer for the viewers. Let's just play the, the chord changes with nothing else. If you can play just the root and a chord in your right hand. Okay, yes, all right. So, so we'll just follow them, um, okay? I'll do them all in root position. Okay. Yeah, B flat. E flat. E flat major seven. This one has a yeah. long name, A minor seven flat Best five. Name, but, hey. It's just a chord and right in the four key. Four up to D. Four right. up to D. And then four up to G. And then to G minor. So in every case, although you switched octaves a couple times, in every case, those roots just kept going up by fourths. Right, we could do it that way. I don't know if you can see that. My left hand. And this yeah. moves up by fourths. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, that's a good visual, I think. All right, now you're talking about a little pattern. Well, it's nice to just play sequences. You hear this all the time in Bach. You know, Bach's always doing this. And then I do it five more places. Sure. So you can borrow from that um, and do a, a kind of a, um, a sequence. And just taking the same idea and moving it down. Even a really simple idea. Just taking patterns and, and moving okay. them down. Speaking of the Bach, I tell you what, I, I had a gig a couple of uh, years ago. The, the, where this song came into play. It was, okay. I was supposed to play all Baroque music. Oh. And they, <laughs> they were in costume, they had Renaissance clothes on, and they're eating turkey legs and, and <laughs> right. carrying swords, and they right. wanted to, to hear a, uh, uh, you know, a lot of Baroque music. Well, a jazz guy's repertoire of <laughs> yeah, Baroque, Baroque music, music like runs out pretty short. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I have a few. But, uh, and so I, I just picked songs that are patternistic like this from the world of jazz and played them in a Baroque way. So instead of this, I was kind of like... <laughs> You're like, oh, that's very nice. Who wrote that? Um, you know, that was, that was Bach or yeah, yeah, Gabriel, yeah. I forget. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, that's what somebody has. Somebody's eating like, sounds strangely familiar, but, <laughs> but not from my Madrigal dinner. It was from, yeah, yeah, exactly. from Chess from Jazz Club. Last night. That's yeah. right. Funny. So, um, you know, I can show a simple way to, to play a bass line on the second half of this. Um, if you want, we don't, you don't necessarily know, you don't have to know how to walk to play okay. a nice little bass line. Okay. Um, and that would be, let's say, from C minor to F to B flat to E flat. Okay. And this okay. is going to give us an idea for a bass line to use. Okay. Right. Just briefly. So, uh, we, you know, we're just playing roots on the one, and we're going to play any other chord tone on, on beat three. So we're playing half notes. Let's check it out. So if we took that to the tune, it'd be like a... Well, that's... Okay. So in your okay. each time on one, and then any other chord tone on the on okay. The that's it. Let afterwards. me make sure. Yeah, to, to, that's a good take-home thing for the viewers. To if you're, when what we're talking about is walking a bass line, for the, or getting to a point where you have something interesting to play. It's on the left, way to a walk. Yeah, in your left hand. Yeah, and kind of a good first stepping stone is to say you need to play the root, but when the chord happens, whether Correct. it's on one or whatever. But to get from one to the other, just take take any note in between those two. Any, any chord tone. Any chord tone. Any other note in the chord. Okay. That's Very just good a idea. nice way to start. So, and that's a nice stepping stone to walking where you fill it all in. All right. And that's the more advanced, and that has a lot more of this going on. Right, right. All. But that is, that's a great step one to get pushed off in that direction. So that's helpful. All right. Well, listen, let's hear you play this tune then. Okay. And we'll, uh, yeah, we'll kind of keep our eyes open for a lot of what we talked about. But if you'd like to take a, a solo, we'd love to hear that as well. Good. Yeah, I like and, uh, this tune. That'll yeah, be it's fun. a great tune. All right. Hey, you know, I'm sorry. Go for it. Why don't you try so we can hear them both? Why don't you do the beginning if you can do like one slow and then work into the jazz? That's a nice idea. All right, okay. we'll do that. I'll start down here low. Playing a little melody in your left hand. Yeah, why not? How about both hands? I want to set up this jazz feel.
lucky am I? I get to sit up close and watch this all day long. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. This excerpt from the public television program, The Piano Guy, has been brought to you by the National Piano Foundation, serving people who love music since 1966. Whether you're young or just young at heart, there's never been a better time to learn to play piano.